Hi guys, my name is Daria Volkova. I run in a Daria strategy channel and uh, today I'm happy to see Anastasia Komornitska. Uh, Anastasia, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone. My name is Anastasia. I'm Chief Product Marketing Officer at Global App Marketing Agency. Um, I've been in the marketing for more than 10 years, mostly working on communication strategy for international companies and their go-to market strategy. Um, I've been living in Ukraine, Poland, India, Middle East, and currently I'm in the rainiest country ever with all the love in the UK in Manchester. When did you become interested in blockchain or Web3 technologies, metaverses? So tell more about your way in Web3. Okay, um, it's interesting question. I wouldn't call myself an early adopter or anything like that. Um, to be honest, it started probably four years ago. So I've joined one of market research company here in Manchester. Um, they analyze attitude, behavior, and consumption of the next generation of consumer, meaning Gen Z and Alpha. And when I've been involved in their study and producing the reports and analyzing those behavior changes, I, I've, I've noticed the spark of interest about, you know, digital currency, metaverse, virtual twins, co-creation, all those busy words that we know right now. But I've seen those responses from five years old kids and, and seven years old and etc. And I'm like, wow, if they know about it, I need to know a bit more because it's definitely the future. I've been always into, you know, the innovation, new technology, and etc. And that moment I realized that I'm a bit behind. Um, so it's when I actually start to kind of deep dive seeing, you know, some of the brands started to uh, introduce their metaverse experience, seeing what, what they're saying, what they're planning, seeing how they're restructuring their departments to actually bring, you know, more immersive experience. So it's probably from that time I started kind of deep dive into it a bit more. And then I've got an opportunity to join Global Up, who actually specialize in, in working with startups, you know, and all the uh, advanced technology. What are you doing there as a CMO? So, as a chief marketing officer, I do everything, <laughs> you know, as everyone marketing will say. But to be honest, uh, so we basically, as an agency, we help startups with, with the product launch, with marketing, PR, and also crowdfunding. We are behind the most, some of the most successful startups in France, Switzerland, and Japan. We work both with traditional, let's say, Web2 startups and Web3. Me uh, and my team, we are helping those startups uh, to understand their mission, vision, USP, uh, if you're talking about Web2, and if you're talking about Web3, it's the centralization you know slightly more complex so we, we're trying to help them on every step of their journey what i like as well we're trying to get involved with with some of the projects that, that do digital experience meaning they potentially have a physical product but they want to connect with a real world um one of the projects that i like uh, and we've been involved in their marketing and communication strategy is the winkiverse it's the first educational metaverse from france and basically they used to have educational robot uh, to bring you know this educational aspects for kids in more interactive way and they also now uh, present their educational metaverse meaning all the digital virtual experience where not only kids, but kids and adults could learn more and experience that co-creation. Uh, we've been supporting them with their uh, marketing campaign for virtual land, um, land that has it its own utility you can get your land you can start building your games or your content you can invite people and i think it's very interesting from educational point of view because i think it's where the blockchain and metaverse overall uh, brings us uniqueness so uh, which web3 or metaverse projects do you like the most in terms of their uh, user experience or product value communication i i mean not from your experience but in general yeah, um, I think I would have two from different reasons. Uh, so first of all, it's probably Roblox. It's quite common, but I will, I'm talking mostly as a marketer because I think they nailed the mass adoption in this way. Um, I'm, I'm quite often speaking on panel uh, discussion or events, and I do this interaction with audience, and I'm showing them some images like, do you know this metaverse or do you know this project? And most often the answer would be towards Roblox. Yeah, I've seen, mm -hmm. I know 
mom, my grandma, my kiddos. So it, it's amazing how, how they brought this brand awareness across different generations, especially I think it happened during the lockdown, you know, when, when for example, gaming become not just a kids entertainment, but family entertainment. We spend time together. So all the trends emerge in that space and household. So I think Roblox, is is one of those brands who could help to do the transition and build that bridge between you know like uh, in real life and, and digital experience and 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 they they're the ones who can build the trust towards this technology and i think more brands should kind of follow them and try to understand and unlock what works for them i like as well dressix as a product you know, of course, not only because it's you know, powerful Ukrainian <laughs> yeah, women yeah. behind it. It's amazing, of course, to know that, you know, we're running the way when it goes to tech startup, but also because, again, I think they nailed the storyline. Um, they explain everything in a very simple way, and you don't need to be techy or you, you don't need to use these jargons with, with a complicated words. They, they explain it nicely. Okay, we're wardrobe for the metaverse or we, we create digital twins. They emerge all the technologies. They have digital clothes in marketplace, but also NFT implementation. They have AR try-on, virtual try-on, clothing to influence, because I know have been you're sending the testing products to influencers and then they throw it away or whatever. Now with, with those actual try-ons that fit your body, not just 90, 60, 90, I'm far behind, I'm five feet, so um, it, it's, it's great. They also recently, you know, they run AI uh, competition for young designers, so they, they merge this technology nicely without being afraid, and at the same time, they clearly highlight the use cases, okay, you're going to have it for video calls, for avatar, for gaming, so it means that they say, not only gamers, you know, when we have a call, I'm going to wear some nice Gucci dress, it's just I wasn't prepared this time, sorry, uh, but <laughs> But you know what I mean? And I can see myself, maybe I'm less gamer, but I am into dressing up for my events or meeting. So they kind of trying to find their audience and do it in, in a very nice and smooth way. So I think, yeah, it's on a personal level, I would also give them a five star. I know you're involved in the Metaverse Fashion Council. Tell more about this. Yeah, so I think I have a split personality, as I always say, between marketing and fashion. So while I work on diverse projects in marketing, my heart is always leaning towards fashion. Um, I've been in, in contact with uh, Metaverse Fashion Calls so just because I want to know more about educational aspects of our industry, of the fashion industry, and trying to see what's upcoming, what what's, uh, young designers want to uh, learn, uh, and etc. So because I'm, I'm quite often speak at the events and I'm meeting people uh, from educational universities and stuff so on. Um, we decided to collaborate and just produce some editorial pieces to see how how to build the right Web3 startup, um, how fashion industry could come up with the new startups, not only for visual aspect, but for operational side, logistics, supply chain, um, ownership and stuff so on. So we've been, um, I've been contributing a few articles and we continue working on it, but also, um, on the local level, I'm part of Metaverse uh, fashion community. We also run some of the educational panel discussion about it because um, we host like uh, all the independent designers from the northwest of England. And I've seen their interest actually in, in, in those this digital twins and how they can express themselves, how they could show their art, because sometimes, you know, as a young designer, you don't always have enough money to produce full collection, but being able to produce a digital one and showcase and get the mm -hmm. hype and marketing and then based on it you can actually produce a collection so again coming the digital aspect of it so I think it's really cool and um, I can see this interest and it, and it inspires me to kind of yay finally we see we see people who is actually want to know more um, so yeah it's just trying to do small steps and see what, how we can improve and bring it to the fashion. Do you see many people in Manchester who are interested in uh, metaverse fashion or in general in Web3. Yeah, um, we have we have quite a few community like blockchain, NFT, um, then women in tech, women in blockchain. I think, uh, and of course, many more in London, but because I'm so busy with local ones, so I still need to travel more to, to visit some uh, London-based events. Um, we do have interest, and I think everyone is trying to kind of emerge into this technology or um, the only thing I think that we need to work more is a fragmentation because we have so many small ones and sometimes you feel like 
guys, let's all get together, <laughs> you know, because we're saying the same thing, but in a different space, 5, 10, 15, 50 people, well, it makes sense for us to maybe collaborate a bit more and have this one, two events, but a bit more powerful and spend less time, um, you know, on, on, on separate events and more in the same place and time. So I think we need to work a bit on it, but I think it's coming again. It's, it's more about word of mouth and we will, we will build these powerful communities. Which brands do you like in terms of metaverse or in, ter in terms of entering Web3? So maybe you have some... Yeah. I think I'm going to be boring, or well, not boring, but I do like Gucci, and I think that uh, while it's been um, well-known and famous brand, I, I remember me being a teenager or in a school, and I thought, oh, it's for, for, for older women, and yeah. <laughs> particular status you should have or it doesn't match my wardrobe or something like that but I think over the last 10 or 15 years they managed to acquire this audience you know uh, at the gap that they used to have that they're not anymore 35 plus but they actually represent the values that are more common to you know millennials generation Z and etc they they trying to understand them they deep dive also you can see by from their hiring um, strategies that they bring in more new people because it's it's one of the common problem and you will hear it behind the stage that fashion industry sometimes the decision makers slightly older and mm -hmm. they don't always represent what's happening on the market and that's why the, some of the decisions are not made or not made in time but now I think Gucci what they do um, they actually merge into it and and, um, and their experience and their brand activation and the, as everyone, it's not always perfect. It's all A-B testing, but I think with the innovation, it's always like this. If we're looking in overall start, 90% of innovation usually fail, you know, at the beginning because of a lot of reasons. But if you don't try, you never know. So yeah, I think I think I would, I would go for Gucci. I also like their strategy in uh, Web3. It's really nice. Uh, so what do you think about the development of metaverses now? Uh, do you think they will be able to replace our real life interactions or not? In my kind of imagination, because I think everyone has different imagination of metaverse, I see it as a 50-50. Same like we have, you know, nowadays remote work and this flexibility, you know, you're two days in the office, two days working from home. So somehow I see metaverse experiences is, is, is the same. It could be if you're offline, you're offline. And then if you want your virtual experience or your digital uh, experience, it could be a bit more immersive. It, we, exactly when we can bring this metaverse to your workspace, to your entertainment. And, and it's not just flat, you know, laptop and screen, but it's more immersive. Um, I think we're still a bit clumsy in this way because, of course, lack of AR headsets for everyone. Not everyone right now has it, even on your phone. Or, you know, the speed is not sometimes there. Uh, VR is even more bulky, you know, so it still needs some areas of improvement. And I think what will bring it is actually this um, digital experience and in real life events. We need to build the bridge. We can't just say people, okay, now go virtual, have your 3D virtual experience. Where have, no, it, it, it's not going to work. You know, while we do understand that it's for next generation, but right now, if you want everyone to understand what Metaverse stands for, start slowly, start explaining it like, when I, when people asking me about the metaverse, I always look to whom I'm saying it, and then I, I tailor my story. If it's a teacher, I say, imagine you would tell your story, your history, your mass, in more immersive, you would show, you can, you know, everything we dream about with the hologram, so what you move is actually happening, and they're like, yes, all my life I wanted to present like this, you know, or you're talking to builders or, you know, engineers and say, imagine your project, you could visualize and show right now what you mean by that balcony. So, Tell it to everyone in their language, bring it to real life events. We, say there. we do sometimes, we do a bit, but if we have it more, then it's not only for the next generation and the generation right now would understand. And as we know, the best marketing is word of mouth marketing. Yeah. We want yeah. it first.
come home and to tell to his wife and to his kid, you know what? It's going to be this virtual experience and I could improve my workflow and etc. So this is what we're missing. I think we focus in one direction, like while I do understand that metaverse comes from the gaming and gamification, but why not to tailor the use cases across? Why not to tell it in a simpler story to everyone? What do you think what are the key points of the promoting uh, of Web3 products or metaverse products? Simplifying our language and I, it's something that I've been talking with a few of my colleagues and also people from you know Web3 startups that we may overuse this jargon words of blockchain technology, Web3 and etc. People want to know about the technology by experience, not by words. It doesn't matter what is behind and how it used and you know even they need to know potentially the basic idea of decentralization but better give them product to experience and talk about it you know we are not on a street market where you need to oversell just technology is easy if it's a good tech it will be a good tech mm -hmm. um, and i think as, as i show with those examples of the projects that i like they doing it they say in simple story in the same words without uh, overusing uh, or over promising because it's what happened with web3 this was probably false promising and some people were like upset um, and we just need to start using the probably build the pr bridge between web 2 and web 3 if you're talking about gaming or we're talking about fashion or education do not jump straight away into web 3 the traffic from web 2 should come into web 3 in a nice way and through the brands or projects that people trust in if they start introducing okay we improve our technology now we can bring more transparency we can bring faster solution we can bring more sustainable solution it's our extension of of the current technology into this then people will say okay I've been with this brand or I've been with this project mm -hmm. or I've been with this product. Sometimes I see that people say like uh, blockchain native or not blockchain native or crypto native, not native. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yesterday you were not native, but today you like native because you have some, uh, I don't know, wallets or you use crypto or you use uh, some metaverses like metaverse native. So it's it's really strange when uh, people separate uh, um, society like native, not native. Yeah, exactly. How how you want people not to be scared if you if you divide them? You know what I mean. So. I think, yeah, we will work on it. Yeah, so I, and uh, I think that these big brands like Gucci, like Starbucks, uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, like Dress X, uh, mm -hmm. they help to involve people uh, because many people know them and they like try to involve and it's, it's really nice for, for mass adoption. Tell me please about um, your attitude to education. So what do you think about uh, Web3 education, uh, is it valuable or not? Is it necessary? Your opinion? Absolutely. I mean, education is always for good and uh, we all need to learn. Doesn't matter, you know, your age and, and your title. But I can see that, you know, this generation, they, they learn in fast and they're eager to learn. Uh, me, myself, I'm, I'm receiving almost daily some messages from, from students. Uh, mostly it's like a fashion student that they work uh, writing their diploma around like fashion and metaverse brands entering. And it's amazing to see that, you know, in their diploma, they're already getting this top to explore um, same like last week we hosted a panel about digital fashion innovation and I've got a couple of students that they've been working on uh, communicate fashion communication and they've been like oh we need to know more I don't think that in our course we have enough coverage about this web3 or blockchain on you know all the new social media uh, exploring the fashion enough and we need to deep dive into it and uh, and it, it, it's amazing also another like young designers coming to me saying oh yes the issue with the copyrights it means i could protect my my drawings through the nft through smart contract my intellectual properties and i'm like wow <laughs> the right statement in the right time so learning more about it more classes more education i mean it's coming and, and you can see in england a lot in universities already the uh, you know business innovation fashion innovation not only fashion uh, particularly in different industries this innovation uh, aspect uh, coming towards almost every industry and and students they deep dive into it and they pick an even as i say they pick a diploma title around this topic so i think it's coming we've been talking a lot that in some ways we might be clumsy, not yet there, but uh, you know that uh, nowadays uh, 
14, 13 years old can open their own startup and they know what does it mean, passive income and direct income. So I think it's up to them to move this industry even more because it's all about actually their vision because they will be the one who see it even more how it will look like even in some of my articles i write okay we'll talk about the metaverse but first we need to ask the pupils the students about it because they're the ones that have a better idea for them digital world or having 50 50 time offline and online is totally normal so they have better idea and in some way they need to educate us how it may look like you know what i mean so i think in this way education goes both way and very often you can see that the older generations are getting like oh my god how to use this tablet yeah 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 software my finance is it so easy to use through this app you know what i mean so i think education is important but we should rethink our approach to education it's not one way it's not always we teaching or older generation teaching younger generation i think younger generation can teach a lot older generation in order to reduce that gap or misunderstanding and clarity uh, in, in in new technologies I saw that you uh, were involved in women in Web3, women in uh, Metaverse. So what do you think about this um, direction of women in Web3? Do you think it's a um, uh, like very good idea to support women or it's a good marketing trick, good positioning to involve very active audience? Uh, but it's nothing common with the real value for women. So what do you think about this? I, I look at it in general as we, we've been trying to bring more women into the tech side because we know the start is still working against us. So I think it's, it should be towards overall the tech roles and and advanced technology not it's not necessary web3 it's 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 a bigger picture and i think we've been also looking in some stats seeing that you know uh, the very low percentage of uh, women tech entrepreneurs and, and why it happens and we just recently when we were on women in, in blockchain talks and i think what we found out is just you know as women we always like to have this perfect perfect product perfect presentation perfect yeah. talk perfect always stopping us from actually entering the market um, and holds us back and and it's it's that's why we, we see less it's not because we don't have it's just we're waiting for make it slightly better and, and get that confidence and uh, i always say that just don't try it's better to try and then to improve, get the feedback and, and, and see how it works. I've been the same. I've been before like, oh, I need, you know, my presentation to look certain way or whatever before I can talk. But no, it will never happen. It's, you know, the world is moving fast and if you will keep editing, editing, you will never enter. So I think it's important for women to just step into technology more and think about what they can bring into it. They're so creative. They have amazing ideas and just don't be shy. There is no one to judge. We, no, there is no one is you know expert or perfect, especially in just advanced technology. As I as I said when we started, there is no expert. The only things that we have is our experience that we can share to each other to become equal. Because if you share yeah. me your case study, I share you my case study. So we have more or less the same knowledge and experience, and we then can carry on and save each other time and, and stuff. So and so we need to just to be more collaborative in that way. I agree with you and. And uh, recently I read that uh, we need to wait 130 years yeah, to yeah, overcome so. yeah, this gender gap between uh, men and women in tech uh, field. And uh, it's really terrible. So uh, me and you will never <laughs> see this, <laughs> this time uh, when it will be 50-50, for example. Uh, so it's really terrible. Uh, but I see that many uh, like companies, uh, they speculate on this topic and they try to, um, you know, it's the term of greenwashing and this, yeah. I don't know, it's like gender, wa gender yeah. washing or diversity washing, I don't know. So they try to pretend uh, be like gender equal, uh, but not. Maybe you want to uh, tell something to our listeners uh, who want to enter Web3 or who want to start the career as a marketer or as a, 
I don't know, a business advisor in metaverses or what what can you say to these people? I would say do not be scared to try because remember that any products, uh, services that we are doing, we're still doing it for people. So if you don't know particular technology or tools, you will learn in, in, a, in a month or two and etc. But the idea that what, why, how, you need to deliver is remaining the same across all the marketing and, and the products. It's just you need to adapt and we all been there. No one jump, you know, or was born, okay, blockchain expert, or I know what metaverse is from two years old. It's all learning curve for all of us. But the earlier you jump into, the more experience you will get. Try to get involved on a different levels. It could be startups, it could be advisory, it could be volunteer. Um, I also would say that what's amazing about Web3 is the collaboration like we we can text each other on linkedin and i could text as well the founders of the most successful web3 project and say i'm working on a similar project or the same industry i face some challenges do you mind have five ten minute zoom call with me to tell because i stuck and you would be surprised but eight, eight in ten people saying yes let's because when people succeed they're not shy or scared to share their experience because they succeed they're happy they're in their place and they would be happily to know. So if you're on your way, don't 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 be shy to ask questions. It would personally help me a lot. It doesn't in the campaigns, in events, and etc. I wasn't shy to ask, and and it, it, it does magic because you can learn someone's experience and avoid their mistakes and be faster. Um, so yeah, try, try, try. Don't be scared and ask the basic as it is for any technology, any role, any job title. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I agree, totally agree with you. Uh, so uh, we are going to finish uh, our conversation. It was very interesting for me and I hope it was useful and valuable for you, my dear followers, listeners. Uh, so Anastasia, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much for your... Yeah for your experience, for sharing your knowledge, like this video and share it with your friends. I will add uh, the links to Anastasia's profiles on LinkedIn, on other social media, so you can add her and follow uh, and ask her if you want. And also you can ask me if you also want to find out from me something. So have a nice day and uh, see you next videos.